Stacy's Extraordinary Words, written by Stacy Abrams and illustrated by Kit Thomas. Stacy's Extraordinary Words. Stacy loved words. She loved to read and write and say them. She adored fun words, long words, unusual words, words with wonderful histories and weird combinations. When Stacy learned a new word, it was like making a new friend. First, she would find the dictionary. Then she would look up where the word had come from and learn its secrets. Did any of the letters hide and stay quiet? Like the P in Tarragon, a bird that lives in the cold northern regions? Or are they strong like the I in Bright? Next, she wrote words in her special notebook of extraordinary words. She practiced how to arrange the letters just right, how to sound them out. That's because she loves spelling interesting words most of all, like onomatopoeia. With her favorite words, she would try to remember their quirks, what made them special. When she saw a super long word like onomatopoeia, a funny word used to describe the sounds of other words, she had to jump and sway. Words like duckling made her grin and persnickety tickled her tongue. Sometimes Stacy thought that words understood her better than people did. When she sat by herself during recess, they never teased her about being quiet or about being clumsy when she fell or about being awkward when the joke in her head came out wrong. When she read books under the covers, words never told her to go to sleep. Words understood why she was grumpy or anxious. And in fact, words helped her explain what she was feeling, if only to herself. One day, Stacy's teacher, Mrs. Blacksley, asked her to wait after class. She squirmed in her seat because she was afraid, petrified, another way to say really, really afraid. Usually, the teacher only kept a student after class because of a blunder, a mistake. Mrs. Blacksley called Stacy to her desk and she returned her spelling test. A big 100 sat at the top of the page. The teacher, the teacher asked her, do you know what a spelling bee is? Mm, a really small insect, Stacy joked. <laughs> Her teacher smiled. A spelling bee is a contest where students compete to spell as many words correctly as they can. I would like for you to participate. Stacy couldn't believe it. Um, who else will be there? I am nominating you and Jake. The spelling bee is next week, said her teacher. Stacy's excitement suddenly evaporated. Jake was not her friend. He was a bully who knew words too. Just yesterday, he used a complicated word that made Suki cry. And last week, she heard him say something cruel to Zbiko about his accent. Stacy thought it was stupendous that Zbiko knew words in two different languages. Stacy knew just as many words as Jake did. And she wanted to say something when he said mean things to her friends, but she was intimidated or scared because sometimes he would say hurtful things to her too. She wished she had her clever words to help Suki or Zabiko or herself by speaking up. Perhaps at the spelling bee, she could be braver. At the spelling bee, she would not be silent. All week long, Stacy studied her spelling words from school and the ones she kept in her notebook. Sesquipedalian. 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 Still, the spelling bee felt as far away as the longest word she had ever seen. Sesquipedalian, a fancy word to describe words with lots of syllables. The days of the week were monotonous, torturous, and sluggish. Every hour felt longer and longer. Stacy wished for the week to whisk its days away. Finally, the morning of the spelling bee arrived. Stacy walked into the county library with her mother, holding her hand tight. Mama gave her a big hug and whispered in her ear, Just do your best. Your dad and I are very proud of you. Stacy followed her teacher to the room where the other students waited until it was time to go. 
Then they went onto a stage. The announcer explained the rules. Kids stepped up to the microphone one by one to get their word. If they spelled it right, the announcer told them so. But if they made a mistake, a bell would ring and the student would have to leave the stage. No do-overs. Stacy's turn finally came. Her stomach ached with nervous energy, but she was ready. Say the word, dither. Sound it out, dither. Spell it, D-I-T-H-E-R, dither. That is correct. The announcer called on the next student and the next. Promptly, enormous, shudder, transportation, craggy, reception, village. Finally, only three contestants remain. Stacy, Jake, and a girl from another school. The girl went up to spell her word, ding. She spelled chocolate without the second O. Oh no. We are down to our final two contestants, the announcer told the audience. Jake took a long time to spell except. Stacy got squeezed, but she remembered lost letters she adored like Q and Z. Jake tackled clambering. Stacy conquered disengage, and Jake defeated geometry. Stacy returned to the podium to do battle with her next word. She repeated it, she pronounced it, and then she spelled it. I N S T A N T A N I O U S. Instantaneous. She waited for the announcer, but ding! The bell rang. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The proper spelling is I N. Stacy couldn't hear the rest of what he said. Tears filled her eyes. But she stayed on stage like a good sport as Jake got the trophy and she received her second place ribbon. Everyone congratulated Jake and so did she. Good job, Jake. Jake laughed, ha, and rolled his eyes. At least I know the difference between I and he. Stacy felt embarrassed, but she refused to let Jake make her cry. Well, I misspelled my word, but I know how to be courteous. You should try it. She turned away and went to find her mom. If today were like one of those stories Stacy loved the most, she would have won. If Jake would have learned that words are a gift, it shouldn't be used to hurt people. But things didn't always happen that way in real life. And sometimes change was harder and it didn't happen right away. Stacy felt a hand brush her cheek. It opened her fist and smoothed out the ribbon. Mama? She put a butterscotch candy on top, Stacy's favorite kind. You okay, honey? I lost, but you came so far, baby, nearly to the end. It wasn't far enough. I got the letter wrong and I didn't win. I failed. Oh, you only fail if you stop, her mother reminded her. I know there's a word for that and you know it too. Stacy thought about one of her favorite words. Perseverance? Perseverance. P-E-R-S-E-V-E-R-A-N-C-N-E. -E -E. Exactly. Let's go home and learn some more words. There's always next year. Stacy imagined all the words she had yet to meet. New words and new ways to speak and help others. She'd find them all. No, Mama, there's always tomorrow. This is a note from the author, Stacey Abrams. I hope you take a moment to read it and learn why she loved words so, so much. Here is a page from Stacey's notebook of extraordinary words. Take a moment to read it. You might find a really awesome word or learn a word you had never heard before. The and